afternoon, beekeepers and bee enthusiasts. How you doing? It's another great day at the farm. And like we said in our previous video, we are now approaching swarm season. It is coming very fast. And here in just a few short weeks uh, in the mountains of North Carolina, it is certainly going to be swarm season, uh, generally around late March, uh, early April. Um, but basically, it will... It's, it's right around the corner. And so, you know, we figured we'd give you a video basically telling you like, okay, what do we need to do to get prepared for swarm season? Like what, what's the kind of materials we need to get ready for swarm season? So we figured we'd give you a good video about this. And we do have a good video about catching swarms. It's called the Swarm Catcher. And that's got the very basics of catching swarms. But here in this video, we're gonna provide you a few little details extra. Um, so that might give you some better advice in catching your swarms. So real quick, when is the best time to catch a swarm? I mean, I'm somewhere random in the United States. I don't know when my swarm season is. Well, what you need to do is you need to talk to your local beekeepers and you need to ask them, when is my swarm season? When does swarm season occur in my local area? Um, like I said, swarm season starts here in, around late March, early April in the mountains of North Carolina. If you are in a warmer climate, then your swarm season might already be going on right now as we speak. If you're in a colder climate, it could be another month or so before your swarm season starts. So it just depends on where you live, but the best thing you can do is talk to your local beekeepers and find out when is the best time for you to get your swarm uh, hives out so you can catch some swarms. So real quick, um, we're gonna kind of go through a few things, um, but it should be really good. So uh, first off, you know, the, the three things we talked about in the swarm catcher video was the three basic needs you needed for catching swarms. And one was uh, bait, another was a swarm hive, and the last thing was location. So I'm not gonna dive too deep into these three things. However, I'm gonna kind of just go over them really quickly, you know, and with a few added things, so you get a good understanding of what you need to be prepared for swarm season. So first off, we gotta talk about is bait. So for bait, um, very simply, if you can take some propolis, which if you don't know what propolis is, it's tree resin that bees get from trees, and basically you can take that propolis and rub it on the inside of your swarm hive. And basically that will give a very good aroma that the bees will really appreciate and it'll draw them and draw new swarms to that swarm hive. Another thing you get is lemongrass essential oil. And I highly recommend using lemongrass essential oil. Um, it's, it's a really good aroma and it definitely lures the bees in and it helps them uh, get involved in that swarm hive. Um, and the last thing, as far as bait goes, if you can get a piece of comb, some old comb, maybe from a hive you had or from someone else, if you can get a piece of comb and put that in the swarm hive, it greatly increases its chances of catching a swarm. So um, the other thing, of course, we need is our swarm body. So, you know, this is, this is the land swarm hive. Um, and we use a land swarm hive because we use land hives. And basically the frames for this swarm hive fit a land's main hive and so it's very easy for us to catch bees in these swarm hives and then move them down to a main hive. You can also use a Langstroth main hive. I, I've seen a lot of people use Langstroth boxes and basically uh, this is really good because I mean it's just it's about the same uh, it's, it's about the same depth as the land swarm hive um, but it can also be used to catch swarms. Um, another, another thing you can use that I've seen people use is it's it's like a, it's kind of like a cylinder, but it's pulp or of some sort. And basically they hang them in trees. Uh, and this is another housing uh, you can use for catching your swarms. Okay, so that's pretty much the different housing that you can use for your swarm hives. Um, the main thing you need to know uh, as far as your swarm hive goes is you want something that is about 10 gallons deep, okay? 10 gallons deep. And if you read Thomas Seeley's book, The Lives of Bees, he did research on catching swarms and he found out that bees prefer, in nature when swarms are moving around, they prefer a container that is about 10 gallons deep. And it doesn't necessarily have to be perfectly square or you know, the, how tall it is doesn't really matter. As long as it's 10 gallons deep, the bees really prefer that. So that's a really good thing to know. Now, the last thing we need for catching those bees is location. Now, first thing I wanna put out, and I've said this before, you can catch bees in the United States almost anywhere, including urban areas. If you're in a city, there will still be honeybee colonies in that city. You might find it hard to believe, but even in houses or roofs or 
whatever, uh, bees will be living there. And so you can catch bees almost anywhere and you shouldn't give up um, just because maybe you have one year where you didn't catch any, you know, you should keep trying um, and going from there. So um, you can catch bees almost anywhere. However, the most ideal locations, in our opinion, from our experience, is very wooded areas like you see here. Um, these wooded areas inside the trees are lots of wild colonies of bees. Um, they like this kind of terrain. They, 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 they like the trees and it's definitely their natural environment. So if you can find tree lines, tree lines are what you're looking for, not necessarily in the middle of the woods, but tree lines, um, that is going to be the primary spot to hang your swarm hive. And it's, it's just a really good area. But again, if you don't live in the woods, um, that's perfectly fine. You can definitely um, catch them just about anywhere, but you definitely have to put the effort for it. All right, so now we basically know the basics of catching swarms, or at least the basic things. Now, those are the things I kind of went over in our original video, the swarm catcher, but now we're going to go over some advanced techniques, some things that are going to definitely get you uh, in a better position to be catching swarms. So first off, what we want to talk about is, you know, we need, we need location to catch these swarms, and if you're only sitting on maybe like an acre of land, you're probably saying, well, how many bees can I catch on a single acre? Well, the truth is, whenever you put a swarm hive out, you want to cover as much land as you can with that single swarm hive. What I mean by that is, if you've got a swarm hive in this tree right here, and then you put a swarm hive in that tree over there, then you're basically covering the exact same area with two swarm hives. And so you're actually losing opportunity for bees to move in. Now, if you were to take a swarm hive and put it here, and then maybe a mile down the road, you go and put another swarm hive there, that is the most ideal way to do it. And you're probably saying, well, I don't have miles and miles of land. How am I gonna do that? Well, believe it or not, we've actually had four different people that we've done a program with. And basically what we do is we say to these people, hey, let us come on your property. We will hang a swarm hive there. We'll put it up. You don't have to do anything. We'll put the main hive. And basically what can happen is, is we catch bees on the property, but we'll cut them some honey from the bees whenever they produce honey. So the people that allow you to put those swarm hives on their property, um, they are basically allowing you to, they are getting pollination out of the bees that you catch on their property, but they're also getting a little bit of honey too. And believe it or not, we have not had someone, of the people we've asked, nobody has told us no. Yeah, it, it seems like a lot of people are very fascinated with having bees that they can catch on their property and they don't have to do anything. You do all the work, you get the swarm hive on their property and basically they will be perfectly fine with that. Now there might be some people who might not want to do that, but you'd be shocked at how many people, if you just ask them and say, hey, let me, let me try to catch some bees on your property right now, you know what I'm saying? And believe it or not, they will be very excited about that. So that is a big thing you can do. And again, you don't want to, you don't want to have all your swarm hives in one single area. You want to spread them out because you know, you're only gonna have so many colonies swarming in a single area. And if you've got 10 swarm hives in a single acre of land, then you're, you're not really getting the most use out of all those swarm hives. So talk to people in your local area and tell them, hey, what would you think about me catching some bees on your property? And you'd be surprised. Uh, they would actually be, uh, a lot of people are definitely very willing to do that. Okay, so other things I wanted to mention. Remember I, I brought up Thomas Seeley earlier with uh, his book, The Lives of Bees. And again, if, if you have not gotten that book, that's a great book for learning how bees act in nature. But what he really does well, and this is like crucial if you want to learn how to catch swarms, is he does so much research in determining exactly what bees prefer whenever they are moving into a, a new swarm hive. Um, and he talks about, and he did all kinds of different experiments to see like what bees like, including what I said earlier with them liking a container that's 10 gallons deep. Um, he also came to the conclusion that bees do prefer uh, hives that are south facing. Um, so south facing is preferred, but I will say we have hung swarm hives in multiple directions and I've had success in multiple directions. But he says you are more likely to catch them in a hive that is south facing. He said about 15 feet was a good height for swarm hives, but we generally do between 10 and 15 feet. But in his studies, he showed that about 15 feet was ideal. And bees like this because there's a lot of predators on the ground 
um, that can find their way to the hive and they like to be up high where things cannot reach them. So that's just some really cool things about that. Again, Thomas Seeley's book, The Lives of Bees, really good information on catching swarms. And I highly recommend uh, you get that book if you're looking into catching some swarms. Okay, so other little things. Um, you know, we have had, <laughs> we've had a lot of cool uh, stories in the past with our swarming. And, you know, we've seen a lot of swarms on our property. You know, we had a telephone company one time that was here doing work and they saw a bunch of bees swarming out of our colonies. And uh, we probably thought they were a little nervous about it, but the truth is um, it's nothing to be worried about with the swarms now. You know, is it possible to get stung in the swarm? Yes, but generally speaking, the bees are just looking for a new home. Um, and, you know, as you saw at the very start of this video that we showed with the swarm that is swarming around, um, they are just trying to look for a new location and uh, they are looking for a new home, so it's nothing to be worried about. Now, let's say you've actually, you've, you've got your swarm hive where it needs to be, and by the way, I wanna mention this, pay attention to this, when your swarm hive is in the tree, it must be level, both ways, it must be level. If that swarm hive is not level, they will build comb in accordance to gravity, and it will give you cross comb, and that's a whole mess of problems. So make sure when you put your swarm hive in a tree, it is level. Now. The one thing I wanna talk about is when you see bees coming in and out of your swarm hive, you need to know how to identify this to actually tell if you've gotten, if you got a swarm or not. Now, if you just see one or two bees maybe coming every once in a while, most likely these are scouts, okay? These are scouts and that's a good sign because that means there's probably a swarm in the area that's looking for a home and they are probably considering your swarm hive for moving in. So seeing a bee or two here and there is a good sign. Now, if you look up there and you see a bunch of bees coming in and out, like I'm talking about a solid stream of traffic coming in and out of the swarm hive, then there's a very good chance you've caught in a swarm. However, what we do recommend is when you catch this swarm, if you think you have it, don't just jump up there the next day and try to bring them down. Um, this, can be, this can be wrong for two reasons. For one, it might not actually be a swarm, it could just be a bunch of scouts. But also, if they don't have enough comb established inside the swarm hive, and you go and transfer them to a main hive, then they are a lot more likely to abscond than they would say if you left the swarm hive in the tree for about two weeks. And it's what we recommend, you keep it up there for at least two weeks. And that allows them to build comb inside the swarm hive, allows the queen to lay eggs. And once they start doing this, they are much less likely to abscond when you move them to a main hive. Um, and so that's about it. Um, I'll try to think of some other things, but I think that's about it. And we thank you so much for watching this video. Again, this is just another reintroductory to uh, catching swarms. And we know you're, you can, look, anybody can catch swarms. You know, I mean, really anybody can get out there and catch swarms. You just need the basic materials. And right now is the time to get ready because literally, swarm, if you're in a warm enough climate, swarm season's probably already began for you. But I know for us, it's gonna be starting in a few weeks and for much colder climates up north, it's gonna be probably another month or so. Um, but in any case, uh, swarm season is right around the corner and you can get out there and you can catch some swarms and you can get bees. Remember, when you're catching bees this way with these swarms, you, you're doing two, you've got two different options. You can either catch bees in a swarm or you can buy a package of bees. Now a package of bees will run you between $150 to $200, all right? A package of bees is $150 $200. These swarm hives here, right here, are about $150 to $200. So you think about your investment. You're investing into a package of bees where if you get those bees and you install them, they could die. And I've heard studies show that packages have about a 50% failure rate. And if they die, then you've just lost your entire investment and it's, it's totally gone and you're not gonna get it back. However, if you catch bees in a swarm hive that you've purchased, uh, for one thing, their genetics are gonna be a lot stronger because they're coming from your local area. Um, but basically, if they die, then you still have your swarm hive that you purchased. And so the very next year, you can go and catch more bees. You know, we have lost bees in the past, but that doesn't stop us from taking our investments in our swarm hives and going to catching more bees. So it's, it's an easy thing to do. And if you ask me what you wanna be doing with your investment, get you a swarm hive, like they're ready to go. And if you wanna learn how to build it, you can check our, our bit, uh, video of building the land swarm hive. Uh, and we think you'll really enjoy that. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and it was a really good conversation to have with you. 
And until next time, we'll see you soon.